Welcome everyone to the new user training for the Transmart Foundation. This is our monthly training class that we offer. Um, it's the it takes place the last Monday of every month, and you can see the full training schedule uh, online. Just briefly, this shows what's uh, the upcoming classes, and uh, besides the one uh, today for beginners, which we will repeat later again in the year. Uh, next month, we'll have an advanced workflow class. We'll have a, a couple of classes on data loading and some advanced work on for data science using the Transmart API. So we are uh, have a lot of uh, several new classes this year, uh, including some advanced topics. And we hope you'll consider joining uh, and watching some of these uh, as we come, come together. Uh, these will be recorded, as I said, and they will be available on our website uh, by the end of the day. Uh, I have a couple of questions just to help us as we get started here. Uh, if you would, um, please uh, respond to this question. Uh, have you used the Transmart platform before? Uh, this just gives us a, a better idea of who's attending these classes and uh, what um, what your level of, of knowledge uh, of the, the platform already is. Uh, and it helps focus not only this class, but also future classes. And uh, as uh, as been the case usually, I'll tell you the answer, the, the, the response is about the three quarters of you have not used the platform before. And uh, as we had hoped, this class really has been focused on uh, new users. And uh, once again, we're, uh, we're, we're seeing that today. And quickly, one more uh, question for you. Uh, we're interested in how will you use the platform? Are, are you going to use it directly yourself? Uh, are you using it in your uh, academic research program or at your company? And are you going to be supporting other users or uh, maybe you're a vendor who's also supporting others? Um, and uh, so today, about half of you are going to be supporting users in your company. A uh, quarter are going to be actually using it in direct research. Uh, and a few of you and a quarter of you about are uh, from vendor sites. So um, again, pretty much pretty similar to what we've seen in the past. So um, it's, it's very good. Okay, so um, I will now turn it over to Sruthi, who will be delivering the class for us, and um, we'll get started. Great, thank you, Rudy. I will try to share my screen. Okay, you should have the request there to share. Yes. Okay, um, just a quick note, um, if you have questions, uh, there are a couple of ways you can raise your hand using the panel. Uh, you can... Um, send a message through the chat room uh, and I will be here the whole time monitoring. So please, um, if you have questions, let us know and we'll try to answer them during the course of this. Okay, Sruthi, please go ahead. Thank you, Rudy. Okay. Well, um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Transmart New User Training. Um, this is a Transmart Beginners course, like Rudy mentioned, um, and a more advanced course will be available next month, um, as you saw um, in Rudy's slides. Um, in this training, we will be walking through Transmart. I will go through a few slides to introduce what Transmart is, a brief history of how all of it began, and how um, this uh, is currently being used. Now, this um, training is scheduled for two hours, but uh, we won't be taking all the two hours, and we will have plenty of time in the end for any questions you may have. All right. so without any further ado, let's get started. Now, the first version of Transmart, uh, Transmart version 1.0, was released by Johnson & Johnson. This was in 2012, which was followed by a community meeting at the BioIT World. Now, for um, people who aren't familiar with BioIT World, um, it is an event where IT and informatics um, applications that drive biomedical research are showcased. Um, so it, the Transmart Foundation uh, was introduced there, and shortly after that, the first version of Transmart um, was um, showcased at the BioIT World. Now, in 2013, um, the official foundation meeting was held, and the same year, um, and then the discussions for the second version, which was version 1.2, were discussed. So the uh, Transmart version that we are currently using is 1.2. And the, um, all of the uh, um, capabilities associated with version 1.2 will be discussed today. 
Now, version 1.2 was released in 2014, and that was followed by the second annual meeting at the University of Michigan. And very recently, we also had the, uh, the foundation had the third annual meeting in Amsterdam, and a lot of new ideas, um, a lot of new improvements were discussed, um, which will be eventually introduced in the next um, you know, versions. Now, um, translational data is definitely big data. So with different kinds of data sets like proteomics, metabolomics, genomics data, which we uh, refer to as omics data, the integration of these kinds of data with phenotype data at a um, cellular, organ, or subject level data, which can capture genetic variation, behavioral, um, as well as environmental exposure variable, is uh, really a challenge, which we see uh, with clinical trial, for example. So what TransSmart can do, or what it does, is it can incorporate all these different types of data. So TransSmart aims to facilitate the integration of all these uh, multi-level data sets. So having the subject or the patient as the focal point. So all of the other omics data, all the other clinical data um, is um, around this um, subject. It will be much clearer once we um, actually take a look at the Transmart tree, how the data is organized and how it can be analyzed. Um, moving on to the next slide, um, this slide is about um, just a brief introduction to uh, the concept of knowledge management. Now, knowledge management is definitely one of the uh, biggest challenges we see these days. So the value of the data generated um, in medicine, for example, clinical trial, um, can help a lot, but it's only effective or valuable if it's collected in a proper way, managed well, as well as shared uh, with everyone who is involved in that project. So the sharing is something um, that TransSmart uh, can be used for. Now, let's imagine a huge pharmaceutical company with several different sectors trying to keep everything structured and integrated, especially when they're working um, in a collaborative setting, so which is primarily how um, most of these clinical trials work. Now, TransSmart can organize and structure the data and allow clinicians, scientists, um, biologists, statisticians, or anyone else who's involved in the project to completely um, you know, integrate genotype as well as phenotype data, analyze the data to get better clinical trial designs, as well as you know, maybe stratify diseases, bimolecular subtypes. So there are quite a few things that can be done um, using TransSmart. And the best part is that using TransSmart, you can also um, share this kind of analysis um, as well as the process of analysis with a lot of people. All right, now this slide here shows, um, briefly shows how uh, the TransSmart uh, platform works. Now a brief, brief look into how TransSmart functions. So TransSmart platform um, basically has two layers. The first one is the data warehouse. And the second is the um, analytical tools that have all these um, analytical capabilities. Now, warehouse is where um, we store the data. The curation that you see here, um, all these curation is basically done and the data is stored in the warehouse. Analytical tools, uh, for example, creating heat map for gene expression data can be done once the data is curated, transformed and then loaded to TransSmart. All the analytical tools in, uh, in TransSmart are based on R, and you can put uh, many different uh, data sets like molecular data, electronic health records, clinical trial data, and many others into TransSmart. So all of these different kinds of data sets um, or studies can be curated and loaded to TransSmart and then further analyzed. TransMart also um, works as a data repository, so you can just use TransMart to store data. Uh, again, this will be much clear, clearer once we look uh, into the tree, into the data in TransMart portal. Now, you can organize the data within folders and subfolders that you can easily access. Right? So we will again go through the actual tree in a few minutes. Before we do that, though, um, let's um, say thank you to all the contributors. So all the names that you see on this slide have um, contributed to the uh, version 1.2. Um, so this is, again, thank you 
all of the uh, contributors. Now, before we uh, go on to the uh, portal, you should have this information with you. So when we are using version 1.2.4, you should have the, uh, the address, which is what you see here, and your login ID and password. So if you have that, you can use this information to log in, and then we can um, work, with the, uh, work within the Transmart portal. Now for today's training, um, I will be using the uh, Thomson Reuters internal instance, but I will be going over um, the studies that you can also find in the Transmart Foundation demo instance. So that is the information you have here. So if you log in here, you should see the demo instance. All right, so like I mentioned, this is the Thomson Reuters internal training instance, but the um, the overall look should be the same for the demo instance as well. So once you log in with the information that has been provided, uh, you should see this screen. So the best way to understand how Transmart works um, is to actually play around in the demo instance, navigate through the different studies that have been loaded, look through the subfolders to um, and you know, analyze uh, one of the studies. So that is the best way to understand how Transmart works, which is what we will be doing today as well. So I will walk us through some of the features um, to give an overview of Transmart. Again, a more detailed um, training session is scheduled for next month. So if you are interested, please do register. So this screen um, that you're looking at right now is what we call as the Browse tab. As you see here, there are different tabs in Transmart that have very different functions. So you have the Browse tab here, you have the Analyze tab, and a lot, a lot of other tabs as well. Today, we will be focusing on the Browse tab as well as the Analyze tab. Okay, so if you do have admin rights, which um, in this case I do, you will also see um, a box here that says Add New Program. Now, if you click on this button, a pop-up window, you will see a pop-up window. Now, we use this to um, input additional information about a study. So you can have a name, you can input the um, you know, descriptors, which we also call as tags. So you can have um, information about maybe the uh, disease domain that the specific study is associated with. It could be rheumatoid arthritis, breast carcinoma, Anything that you think is relevant to the study can be put in here. So at this time, I will close this. I will not be creating a new program today. But this is a, a quick thing that you can um, input more information for any future reference. Again, you can do this if you have admin rights. OK, now first, let's start with the search. So with the browse, um, window that you see here, one of the best things you can do here is um, search for the studies. So instead of going through all the studies, for example, on the left here, you have two different um, disease domains. If you click on this, you should see the list of studies that have been loaded. Now, instead of going through each one of, again, in your demo instance, you might see much more or, or a much longer list than what you see here. So instead of going through each one of these and looking for a specific thing, you can also just search here. So let's do a quick search. So this is where we have our search box. Let's say I'm looking for um, a study that um, deals with or that is associated with rheumatoid arthritis. So I'll just type arthritis here. And I will look at rheumatoid arthritis. Now if I click on this, the Browse tab only shows me studies. For example, here I have three studies um, that have rheumatoid arthritis. Now, if I click on one of these studies, or just click on the name, I will see um, a description of what the study is. Here, there's a paragraph about what the study is, what the um, results were. So you can pretty much input um, all the information you know about the study here. If you scroll a bit down here, you also have additional information about this study. Again, you see rheumatoid arthritis as the disease here. Now you have 
other uh, information as well. For example, you see that the study design is interventional. So there are a lot of things you can do within the Browse tab. What we did right now is search. What you can also do is a filter. So let me clear this. That way we can start afresh again. We, we see all these studies that are loaded here. Now let's say I want to filter using a specific therapeutic domain. Okay, so here you see therapeutic domain. Click on it and let, let's look at the immune system diseases. Now if I click on this, I only see the autoimmune diseases. Now if I click on the little uh, plus node here, I see all the diseases um, that are considered autoimmune or immune system diseases. Now we can add more filters as well. So you're not limited to using just one filter. For example, let's go back to filter here. And let's um, add another filter. So let's say study design. So if we want to look at um, observational, let's click on observational. All right, so now what we see here is we're looking at all the studies that are either associated with immune system diseases so studies that are immune system diseases, or studies that are observational, study design. So you see both kinds of studies. Now, if you want to limit your um, list of studies to and, let's say you, you, you only want to look at studies that are um, associated with immune system diseases and are observational study design, you have a, um, a toggle switch here that goes back from and or or. So at this point, as you see here, you're looking at an OR. So if you click here, it takes you to the two studies that are that belong to the immune system disease category as well as their observation. All right? So this is a, a nice way of filtering um, specific studies so that you know you're only looking at the data files or the data studies that you are interested in. Right, so let, you can either clear this by clicking the individual X that you see here, or you can just click clear here. All right, now we are back to the page that we started. So this was the quick um, overview for the browse page. Now, I will be spending a bit more time with the analyze tab, which you see here. So if you click on the analyze tab, you should see the same studies that you saw um, in the Browse tab. Also, a few more studies that you may not have seen in the Browse tab. Now, the reason for this is in the Browse tab, you need to add the studies here. So if you have not added the information for the studies, you will not see all the studies in the Program Explorer here. But you have loaded all the studies here. So Analyze tab, again, is a, um, a tab where you can see all the studies, you can analyze the data, you can set your cohorts to analyze the data, and so on. So that is what we will be doing for the um, rest of the um, training session today. Like I said, the Analyze tab is where we can perform a, a different or a number of analysis on the loaded studies. So here on the left panel, you will see the list of studies. And on the right panel is where um, we can create the cohort. So this is our cohort builder. You see um, the subset one, subset two, and this is what we can do. Before we um, jump into building cohorts, um, let's look at how these studies are loaded, how they look like. Let's look at this specific study. So again, this is a rheumatoid arthritis study. If I click on this, we see a number of different folders. Now the data sets are curated and loaded into these kind of folders. So each of these folders has a um, has a number of subfolders. For example, if I click on um, clinical data, I see a few more folders. So these are more detailed. These correspond to specific variables um, in the uh, data set that was provided. Now generally, uh, the way the data is loaded is that we put all demographic information, for example, um, gender 
uh, age, racial information in a folder called demographics. So under subject, you have demographic as well as medical history. Now all medical history data, for example, medication, uh, previous medication, concomitant medication, all of these are put in the medical history folder. Um, other variables like uh, disease characteristics or um, specific assessments like vital signs, um, EKG or lab measurements um, can be found under clinical data here. So if you click on clinical data, you should see a lab measurements under clinical data. Now again, this is a general way um, of organizing the data. Again, this can be changed um, based on how you would like to analyze the data. Um, a few other things that you will notice is, like I mentioned, demographics. Let's open demographic folder. Like I said, under demographic, usually we load the racial information, the sex information, as well as the race. Now, one of the things that you will notice here is that the um, some of these have an ABC and some have one, two, three. Now, the reason why we have this is that all categorical data or all textual data such as male and female, Transmart puts an ABC next to it. So this is an indication that this specific um, data is categorical. Now in comparison, if you look at age, you have a one, two, three. So now this denotes that this um, data is numeric in nature. So just a quick glance um, at the, uh, the study tree, you know what kind of variable uh, you're dealing with. So is uh, numeric, is it categorical? Now there is another um, symbol that um, we quite normally see and load, which is here. So this is um, high dimensional data. So you see a DNA symbol here which denotes high dimensional data. Now high dimensional data can be gene expression data, microarray data, sequencing data, any of so the reason why this is different is because um, the data, the kind of data that we load is uh, made, like for example, for each patient you have multiple measurements, so multiple samples per patient. In contrast, what you see here, for example, male and female, is that you have one value per patient. So that is the major difference and you will see it um, when you look at your tree, um, any gene expression or any high dimensional data, you will see a DNA set symbol. Any categorical, you will see an ABC. In any numeric, you will see a 1, 2, 3. All right. Now, another thing um, that, again, you will notice is the uh, number in parentheses. Now, the 68 next to the folder sex indicates that we have um, information about sex for 68 subjects. Now 68 is the number of unique subject IDs or uh, patient IDs that we have. Now further, if you look closer, um, you will see female and male. Female is 58 and male is 10. Now what this indicates is that out of 68 patients that we have the sexual information for, 50 are female and 10 are male. So you will see this information for all the folders that have been loaded. For example, we have 68 here for biomarker data. So we have information about the microarray data for 68 patients. That is what this um, indicates. Okay, now that we have seen um, the way we load the data, the way we organize the data, structure the data, let us go back um, to the cohort builder that we have and try to build um, a few cohorts. Like I mentioned here, this is what we call as the cohort builder. So in the analyze tab, we can um, subset the data using this cohort builder. Now, as you can see, this comprises of two boxes. So you have um, subset one here, and then you have subset two here. So let us um, look at the same study that we have and build um, a few cohorts. So let us look at, let's say, this specific folder. So under rheumatoid arthritis study, under clinical data, let us look at um, clinical response. Now here in clinical response, let us, we, again, you see um, quite a few different folders, so quite a few different subfolders. Let us look at the disease improvement score here. 
So what this disease improvement score here indicates or shows is that um, these are ACR responders. So ACR0 res uh, responds to ACR non-responders. Then you have ACR20, 50, and 70. All these represent the percent of patients who responded. So a 70% um, improvement in ACR is what the ACR70 indicates. So let us build a simple cohort. Um, so the way we build a cohort is, let's say we want our subset one to be ACR non-responders. So what you can do is just click on ACR zero, drag it to the box number one. As you see, you see the red turns into a green, so the indicator arrow turns green, and you can release your mouse. So now you have um, put ACR zero in your subset one box. Let's do the uh, subset two as ACR 70. So now we are dragging and dropping ACR 17 into subset two box. So again, so what we have done here is our subset one is ACR non-responders and subset two are subjects who show 70% improvement um, in ACR score. So here again, under analyze tab, you will see uh, a few other um, tabs. So we will go through this uh, one after the other in today's uh, training session. First, let's go to summary statistics. Now, summary statistics um, is a feature in TransMart that allows the user to quickly analyze the data. So this feature also provides us with statistical um, analysis capabilities, like the mean that you see here uh, for H. So for any um, numeric data, uh, the summary statistics uh, quickly calculates and shows um, basic statistical analysis like the average, the mean, the standard deviation, the median, and the total number of data points per subset. So here again, you see uh, for subset one, which are our ACR non-responders, um, you see that we have 21 data points. So we have 21 patients here. Um, who belong to the subset one category, and then for subset two, we have 13, which is what you see these numbers to match up. So ACR 20 or ACR zero non-responders, we have 21, and then ACR 70, we have 13 unique uh, patient IDs. Now, summary statistics also provides information about sex here. Again, you see the count. Uh, for any categorical variables. So in terms of sexual um, distribution for subset one, we have 20 females and one male. And for um, subjects who showed 70% improvement in ACR, we have four males and then nine females. Now, this um, some of statistics can also show racial information, but for this specific study, we do not have racial information loaded. So, if you do not have something loaded, um, it will show it as blank. So, at this, or I'm sorry, for this, we have Asians. All 21 here are Asian. Right. All right. So, let us go back to the comparison tab and build um, additional um, cohorts, or let's build a bit more complicated cohort than this. Okay. Now, let's say you want to subset the data. Um, let's say subset one. You want to add an additional parameter. Let's say we want to add um, the, the EU LAR response that we see here. So let's see what we have here. All right, let's say for subset one, we want ACR non-responders, right? And let us see this. All right, let us drag and drop no from here, and then drag and drop in the same box. Now what we're doing here is we are adding um, So we're looking at subset one, we're looking at ACR non-responders or um, subjects who showed um, no as their ULAR response based on DAS 28 CRP at week 14. So we are doing um, a cohort selection where we are choosing subjects who are either ACR non-responders or um, have no as their um, response. So if you click on summary statistics now, 
we will see that the summary statistics has been updated. Again, based on the cohort that we select in the comparison tab here, the summary statistics gets um, updated. Now, like I mentioned here, so dragging and dropping um, parameters or different variables into the same box uh, creates an OR function. Now, let's say we want to um, do an uh, AND. So we want to look at, um, again, we want to look at ACR non-responders and um, subjects who said no, who uh, are categorized as no for this specific variable. So if we drag and drop this in the second box of subset one, now what we have done is we have built a cohort for subset one where subset or subjects are ACR non-responders, ACR zero, and are subjects who have no for this specific variable. Now again, if we click on the summary statistics tab, again we see that the summary statistics has been updated, again based on the cohort that we um, selected here in the comparison tab. Right? Now we can do, again, quite a lot of um, different things um, here. So let's um, add, um, let's say, numeric data. So we can include numeric data, for example, let's say um, age. So age can be found, closely, age can be found in subject, demographic folder, and then age. Now, when we are using numeric data um, to um, subset, one of the interesting things that happens is that once we drag and drop this age in the um, subset one box, you will see a pop-up window. Now with any numerical um, information that we load and we try to subset using, we do find this um, window. Now you can hit on show histogram here. Now this shows a nice distribution or histogram of all the, um, the age range that we have for the loaded study. Now, based on this histogram, you can select the um, age range that you're interested in. For example, uh, for this example, let's choose patients who are uh, 50 or older, or more than 50. So you can click here, by numeric value, and you see a drop-down menu here. You can choose greater than, greater than equal to. I'm going to choose greater than and you can input the um, number or the, uh, the years here. So in my example, I'm going to choose 50. So here I'm choosing subjects who are more than, greater than 50 years of age. You can click OK. Let's do the same for um, subset two. So drag and drop H in this box. You don't have to do show histogram every time, but it's, it's a nice feature to have, it's a nice feature to look at. And then you can do greater than, and then you can do 50 again. Let's click OK. Now, if we look at summary statistics, we will see it has been updated again. So here what we're looking at, again, here you can see all the um, different uh, parameters that you have used to subset your cohort or to create your cohort. For example, in subset one, we see that we, we are looking at ACR zero, ACR non-responders, and we are looking at um, the EULAR response, where it was a no, and we are looking at subjects who are 50 years or older. So it's a nice way of looking at it. Let's do one more. In comparison tab, let's say uh, we only want to look at female patients or female subjects. So you can just drag and drop female in this box. And then let's do the same. As you see, you can add multiple um, parameters. So every time you add um, a parameter, you will see a blank box um, show up. So th this is an endless, um, you know, that you can use. Same for subset two. Let's add female here. To subset two box. Again, summary statistics. Again, we see 
um, the uh, summary statistics has been updated. If we scroll down here, we see sex as only female because that is the cohort we have selected. So we go up. So what we have done here is we're only looking at female subjects, which reflects here. So we're only looking at the females. So this is, um, you know, different ways of building your cohort, again, depending on what you want to analyze um, with the given data. Okay, so, um, all right, so now that we have created these complex cohorts, um, let's try to analyze um, much simpler cohorts. So you can either just click on these small X's or you can just do a clear subset here. So you can click on clear and that um, will delete all the information you have in your cohort as well as in the summary statistics. So you are starting with a blank slate, essentially. Okay, let's do okay. All right. So now for our analysis, um, let us again go back to our clinical data, clinical response. Let us again do the disease improvement score that we have here. And let us compare um, ACR non-responders, ACR zero, with subjects who showed 70% improvement in ACR as our subset two. So we'll keep our cohort simple for the uh, next part of the training session. Let's quickly look at summary statistics. Again, um, summary statistics is back to um, the way it was. So again, we see female, male, and the only two um, cohorts that we're comparing are the ACR non-responders for subset one and ACR 70% uh, improvement for subset two. Okay. Now, in summary statistics, um, there are a lot of things that you can do in summary statistics. So it's not just the demographic information or the racial distribution that you can um, see. For example, um, if you want to quickly analyze something, um, let's say you want to see how many, um, let's drag and drop this clinical variable. If you just drag and drop the variables in summary statistics, it gives you um, a distribution, a quick um, chi-squared, for example, here for any categorical data that you have. Or, for example, if you um, want to drag, let's say, age. Again, you have age distribution here already, but you can drag and drop any variable um, you're interested in analyzing into the, um, the summary statistics tab for a quick look or a quick um, analysis. Uh, another thing you can do, let's look at, for example, numeric data. So under, under clinical data here, we also have lab measurements. So for numeric data, let's click on lab measurements. You see you have CRP measurements. Let's look at week 14. So if you drag and drop numeric data into some statistics here, Again, you see um, some statistical analysis done for each subset. You see a p-value and a t-statistic done um, for the cohorts that you have selected. So again, it's a quick overview or a quick uh, look at the analysis to see if um, your cohorts, when you're comparing the two cohorts, do they make sense? Um, how can you analyze and quickly see results? Now, what we are seeing here with the CRP is um, for the subset one, uh, we are looking at CRP for ACR zero, which are our subset one ACR non-responders. So when we look at this, we see that CRP is much higher for our subset one, which is our ACR non-responders, as compared to our subset two, which you see here, it's much lower. Now, CRP is, is um, an anti-inflammatory marker, or is, a, is an inflammatory marker, and it is much higher um, generally in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, which is what we see here for subset one. But in contrast, for subset two, uh, who are subjects who show 70% improvement in ACR, we see a much lower CRP. So what we are essentially looking at here is what we expect to see. Um, 
Now, we have done, so with categorical data, like I mentioned, we have chi-square um, automatically calculated, but with numeric data, we have the t-statistic calculated. Now, since for this study, we also have biomarker data, for example, the high-dimensional data that I showed before, there are quite a few things that we can do to analyze um, the high-dimensional data as well. So let's do that. Now let's go to Advanced Workflow, which we see here, which is the fourth tab. If you click on Advanced Workflow, you see um, an Analysis button here. So if you click on Analysis, you see a, a list of um, analysis functions um, that are uh, present in Transmart that you can do to analyze the data. Again, in this um, training session, I will not be going over all of these, but I will um, give you an overview of um, some of these analysis, of how they are done, and how the data looks like. Again, like Rudy mentioned, we do have an advanced um, training session scheduled for um, next month, so that will provide more information, more detailed information um, about um, these specific functions. Now, again, like I said, since we have the high dimensional data here, let's try and do a heat map. So, in this analysis um, menu or the list, click on heat map. So, once you click on heat map, you will see um, this box here. So, you can drag and drop your high dimensional node, the one that has the DNA symbol, drag and drop it here. So now if you want to create your um, heat map, you can click run here. So now this generally takes some time, but you can either just leave it here to run and we can explore other things in the meantime. So let's look at um, grid view, but, you know, and give it some time to create um, and calculate the heat map. So grid view. Now grid view is another um, really nice um, uh, things we have in Transmart. So what it, it does is what it lets us look at the data in a tabular format. So you have several different columns here. Um, so it's, um, you will see a lot of columns. For example, you have a column here um, called subject. Now this column subject um, has numbers that have been auto-generated in Transmart. So this is not the subject ID that was loaded with the data set. But if you look at the patient column here, now these are the unique subject IDs that were loaded with the, uh, the data. The subset column next to shows the individual, the, the patient ID. So that is what the, um, the patient ID here is. Samples are usually blank unless you have provided the sample names. The subset here is the cohort that we have selected. So we have the subset one and subset two. So this grid view here, again, reflects the subset that we have chosen. For example, um, this specific um, patient, RI21, belongs to subset 1, which in our case is a um, ACR non-responder, whereas this specific subject belongs to subset 2. In our case, we, uh, we showed 70% improvement in ACR. Now, if we move on to the next column, we have the trial. Now, this trial is the uh, unique study ID that we provide when we load the data to Transmart. So each one of these studies has a unique study ID. For example, this one has a GSE uh, 20690. Now, a few other columns, such as sex, age, race, um, are, um, you can see them in the grid view automatically. So again, these correspond to a specific patient, um, you have specific sex information, age of that patient, as well as racial designation of that patient. Now, a lot of these things um, are, again, by default, but you can also um, just drag and drop the variables that you would like to see. For example, again, let's go to clinical data. Let's say I want to look at um, this. I can just drag and drop this folder and put it here. So again, what I have done is that I've included this um, specific variable, dragged and dropped this in the grid view, 
so that I know this specific patient has all this information and also has this specific value for the variable that I chose. Now, this might look a bit cluttered, so there there are ways that you can um, that you can do to make this list cluttered. For example, if you just hover over these uh, one of these column names, you see this down arrow. So you can click on the down arrow, hover over the columns, and you can uncheck the ones that you don't need. For example, I don't need to see subject at this point. The samples are blank. Maybe I would like to keep the subset so that I know which patient belongs to which subset. Um, I can remove the trial name. I can remove a few of these things and just keep the ones um, that I would like to see. So this is a way, um, again, to um, you know make it less clustered. Um, so that you can analyze or you can just see the information um, about the specific cohorts that you have created. Now you can also sort the specific um, data. So if, if you just again hover over one of the columns, you can do it by ascending patient ID, descending patient ID, ascending age. So you can do a lot of um, these things. You can play around with it um, in the grid view. Another very nice thing that you have um, in this grid view is the export to Excel. Now, if you would like to export this data that you have, um, you know, uh, dragged and dropped in grid view, you can click on the export to Excel button here, and it exports or downloads the Excel file. So if we click and open the Excel file, we will see all the um, we will see all the columns that we um, dragged and dropped in grid view for the two cohorts that we have created. So again, the, this specific data is for ACR non-responders and the ACR um, responders who show you know, 70 percent improvement in ACR. So I'm going to close this Excel file. So that's our grid view. Let's go back to our advanced workflow. Remember that we had the heat map um, running. So if we go here, now we see that the heat map is done and we see the heat map here. Again, to summarize what we did was with, for the advanced workflow, we went to biomarker data, we looked at the, the microarray data that we have loaded here, we dragged and dropped this information into this box and we hit run. Again, depending on the data set, depending on how large the data set is, this, this might take some time. But now that this is done, here we see the heat map. Now if you click on this heat map, the uh, heat map can be downloaded and saved as an image file. So this is saved as a .png file. And then you can open this um, in your image viewer, any image viewer you have. A few other information about the heat map. So again, what we see here is that this heat map is separated by the subset. So we chose subset one as ACR non-responders, subset two as subjects who showed 70% improvement. What you see on the right here are all the gene or probe um, IDs that we have. And then here at the bottom, what we see are the specific sample um, names. So that is how it works. If you have more questions, there is also a, a little question mark here. So if you click on this question mark, it takes us to another page where we have additional information about um, this specific functionality. So it tells us you can go to advanced workflow, you can go to heat map to create a heat map, and then it tells us how exactly we can drag and drop the variable how to run the heat map selection and what the heat map looks like and what it exactly means. So we have these little question marks for um, uh, you know a lot of um, the functionalities we have here. So if you are interested, you can go through each one and see how it's done and what it means. All right, there are um, a, quite a few um, other analyses that we can do. Uh, let's say. Let's go back to the analysis, and let's say we want to do um, let's say we want to do a Fisher test. So this is the um, chi-square um, test. 
can also do hierarchy of clustering, but I mean, let's do the, uh, the Fisher test first, right? So when you are changing the analysis from one to another, you will see um, this uh, pop-up box. What this essentially is saying is that if we click on OK, the analysis that we did previously will be removed. And again, you will have a blank slate where you can um, you know, start your, um, the other analysis all over again. So let's click OK. All right, there. Now here we have the um, Fisher test. So let's look at, let's see, uh, again, we are performing chi-square uh, chi test here, so clinical data. Let's look at um, this one. Let's look at the same one. So let's see, let's drag and drop this into our independent variable, and let's drag and drop another a categorical variable, for example, this here. Let's run. Okay, now what you will notice here is that although I dragged and dropped ACR non-responder, ACR 20, ACR 50, and ACR 70, we only see information for ACR 0 and ACR 70. Now the reason here is that our, um, the cohorts that we have selected are only for ACR 0 and ACR 70. So again, this is a, a quick um, way of uh, you know, calculating chi-square for um, these two categorical variables. Right? Again, you can click on this question mark here. It will take you a different page. It will show you um, what the Fisher test is, how it is done, so on and so forth. Okay, let's go back here. All right, so that was um, our uh, advanced workflow. Again, like I said, there are a lot of workflows that you can do with the data you have depending again on the kind of data that's available for you to analyze as well as the kind of study and what exactly you would like to analyze. There are um, quite a few options um, that you can use to visualize the data. Now, um, the next portion um, of this um, um, training will be uh, looking at the data export. Now, data export is here. This is now, what the data export does is that when we create the cohort, when, you, when we run the analysis, so as soon as we create a cohort, we have all the information pertaining to that specific cohort. For example, in our case, we have subset one, non-responder, ACR non-responders, 70% improvement in ACR, and all the information associated with these two um, subsets is already here. So we can also export this data and analyze the data um, outside of Transmart if we would like to do that. So what you're seeing here is all the information associated with these two subsets. So you have the clinical low dimensional data, which includes demographic data, um, you know, uh, all the other variables that are associated with this, as well as the microarray data here, which pertains to the biomarker node that we see here. Now again, we see 21 patients in subset one, which again adds up to what you see here. Um, in clinical data, we have 21 subjects. And for our subset two, which was ACR 70, we have 13 subjects. Now if you want to export all this information and um, analyze this data outside of Transmart, you can click on the data that you'd like to export. So sometimes it's just the uh, uh, it could be just the uh, high dimensional data that you would like to export, or it could be all of the data that you would want to see. So you can click on the individual, um, click checkboxes here, and click on the export data button that you see down here. So this does take a long time, so you can either just wait for it, um, you know, or to, you know, compile everything, or you can just click on the run in background button here. And then it says your job has been put and it, the, com the compilation is running in the background. So when it is doing that, you can go back to your summary statistics or grid view or advanced workflow and create uh, you know, more analysis. You can analyze more data. 
So this, um, the compilation again is running in the background. Now if you want to check, you can also go to the export jobs um, tab here. Here you will see, um, so this will be the name. So the person who is um, downloading the data or extracting the data from Transmart, it will say the status, right? Right now um, it's gathering data, all the data that we have asked for. It also tells us when this specific task was started. So this was started um, right now, a minute ago. So the one at the bottom is just an example of how it will look like once um, it's done gathering all the data, once it's done compiling all the data, and the data is ready for us to um, download and analyze outside of Transmart. So while that is running, uh, we can go back to advanced workflow and try to do um, another analysis. This time, let's try and do um, hierarchical clustering. Again, uh, you will see the uh, pop-up window here. Let's click on OK to remove the previous analysis that we did. And again, now we have a blank slate. Um, again, for the clustering, um, let's look at the high-dimensional data, drag and drop the high-dimensional data into the box. And for clustering, let's look at specific gene that we'll, uh, if we are interested in. Let's click on the high-dimensional, oh, there you go. So now what this shows is that the job that we um, try to export, so all the information that we try to export in the um, data export uh, tab has been done. So now the data is ready for us to download and analyze outside of Transmart. So you can either do view now or view later. So if we click on view now, what happens is that it downloads uh, a zip file here. Right, let's wait for a few minutes. Let it, or we can do this. So till that downloads, let's look here. So again, uh, summarizing what I did here. It's opening, there you go, okay. So uh, this is our data export. So we exported the data, we ran the exportation in the background. Now once it was done, it gave us a pop-up window that said it's done, and we hit on look at the files now. So it gave us a zip file. So if we click on this, you will see information about all the subsets. So subset one, you will see the information about the clinical file. So you can open this clinical file and you will have all the variables associated with this specific subset um, in the clinical data files. Similarly, we also have the molecular data, the microRNA data. So you can, you'll see the sample name, the specific values associated um, with each gene or probe. So this is, again, a nice way of exporting the data and then analyzing it um, outside of Transmart. Um, let's do this one um, last analysis. And after that, we can stop the training session and we can start with any questions you may have. So now for the clustering, let's choose um, a specific uh, gene. Let's say, let's look at this specific gene. And let's do apply selection. Right? And then let's hit run here. This will take some time. After a few minutes or less than a few minutes, you will see the uh, heat map. So again, this is clustering. Just like we did for heat map, you, if you click on this specific um, image, it will be downloaded as an image file, which again, you can open in your image viewer um, so that you can look at it um, much clearly. So this gives a more, um, a better uh, visualization of the same heat map. Right. So that is the um, end of this training session. So to summarize what we have done today is um, we looked at a few things. We looked at the browse tab. We went over the kind of studies that we have. Uh, how you can search for specific studies uh, that you're interested in using the search box here, how you can filter um, using the filter functionality we have in Transmart, um, how you can add specific tags if you have the admin rights, and how you can analyze the data in Transmart. 
So we have looked at the folder structures and the specific way the um, data is shown in Transmart. For example, all textual values are shown as ABC, numeric values have one, two, three, and again, high dimensional data has a um, DNA symbol next to it. So we did a few um, uh, you know, analysis. We looked at summary statistics tab. We looked at grid view, exporting grid view, as well as a few um, advanced analysis workflows. So that is the um, last part of my training session. So it's, uh, quite a lot of information about Transmart to take in for the first time. So again, today's training was um, meant as an overview or um, a sort of an introduction to Transmart and uh, you know several uh, of its capabilities just to get us started. So more detailed or a more advanced training is also available next month. So if you're interested, please register. And again, thank you all for your time. And Rudy, I'm going to um, hand over the ball to you now. Great. <clears throat> thank you, Sruthi. Very nice. Um... We've had uh, only a couple of questions during the session, which I tried to answer. Uh, the, the recording will be available uh, on the website. Um, we have one uh, question. Can I use the login credentials passed in this demo to further familiarize myself with Transmart? Um, there is a, a demo site, which you can get to through the, the website um, and then uh, or from the wiki pages. And uh, there's information on login there. Uh, so we, we do have a, a demo site that you can log into. And again, uh, there's a clickable um, link to that on the website, uh, transmartfoundation.org. Uh, and then you'll, you can find that. If you uh, have a question, you can um, type it into the question window or raise your hand. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Mohit, you have a question. I can unmute you. Mohit, you should be able to talk now. Mohit Kumar, you have a question? You may still be on mute. Okay, anyone else have a question? I think um, that might be it. Okay, well, uh, again, thank you, everyone. Uh, hopefully this was, uh, this was very helpful um, for you. Uh, it was a, certainly a very nice overview of the, the basic platform. Um, a lot more information is coming uh, in some of the future classes, both in terms of loading data and using some of the, the load tools, uh, as well as some of the advanced workflows that are available in the system. Uh, these training classes are offered every month, the last Monday of the month, uh, with different topics each month, and uh, they all are all free uh, and available. We just ask that you please regist register. Um, uh, okay, here's uh, okay. Mohit asked this question: um, Can can support vector machines be applied to Transmart? <clears throat> Right now, we don't have um, a support vector machine analysis tool in our advanced workflow. Um, but that is something you can do once you export data. So once, let's say, you create your cohort, um, you know, you know specifically what you want to look for, then you can put in the SVM algorithm and you can do that. So right now, the transport that we have does not have um, specific, um, for example, here, we don't have an SVM here. Right. Yeah, there, there is an API that you can use to build also your own connectors. Um, there is a commercial connector to go to Spotfire, for example, that's available from Perkin Elmer's uh, for a fee. Um, and then we have uh, in an upcoming release, we have uh, a smart R, which has in, puts in some advanced analysis tools uh, for you using R um, that uh, you can can do things with. Um, and there's a there is, a, as I say, a full API uh, that you can uh, code yourself uh, or there's a number of vendors who are able to, to write code uh, and, and are, are doing these sorts of things either you know as a proprietary connector uh, or as something that gets contributed back <clears throat> okay 
I don't see any other questions right now. Uh, again, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, and uh, we appreciate your uh, interest in the Foundation's platform. We hope that you will have a chance to try it out yourself uh, in the future. And uh, please come back for a, another class or uh, refer your colleagues to, to this class uh, in the future. So thank you, Shruti. And uh, I will, with that, I will close the training class. Thanks, everyone.